Although the SpaceX Starship second version has not yet been physically revealed, the public's eyes have been caught up by its render in Elon Musk's recent presentation. Larger and more powerful is what we notice when we get a glimpse of this variant. However, when we look closely, there are thousands of other innovations waiting for us to discover. One of them is the nose cone, the forward-most part of the rocket that reduces aerodynamic drag on it. The change in the rocket's size results in a series of changes in the physical properties and aerodynamics, requiring huge upgrades on the nose cone. So what are those upgrades? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The first one is always height. Not only the payload, but also the nose cone has increased significantly in size. As far as I know, V1's nose cone, which is assembled by two steel big rings, is particularly large, with a diameter of around 9 meters. At a glance, the V2's nose cone will be likely added by one or two more similar rings, making it higher considerably, but its diameter is slightly narrower. SpaceX calculated the reasonable proportion between height and width to benefit the rocket's payload capacity while reducing excess dead mass. Additionally, narrowing the diameter also increases the rocket's safety, but I will talk about it later. Interestingly, as Elon's desire, the nose cone gets more pointy. It needs to be pointy. Round is not scary. Pointy is scary. In general, this part should be rounded like a von Karman shape instead of pointed in order to protect the rocket itself during ascent and descent. When you fly through something faster than the speed of sound, it compresses, and that compression makes heat, just like the hot output line on an air compressor or the ignition of a diesel engine. Blunt objects compress the air in front of them, heating up the air in front of them. That slug of compressed air is blasted all over the place before it can touch the object and heat it up. By contrast, in sharp objects, the superheated air flows smoothly around the object, passing more heat to it. Fighter jets and Concorda have pointed noses because they fly slower, less than 2.0, and or use fuel preheat to cool the airframe. Rockets fly through the atmosphere at around Mach 7. They go faster than that, but not until there isn't much atmosphere left. So does that mean making the Starship pointy would be a trade-off of safety for aesthetics? In my view, not really. The amount of air resistance that opposes a rocket's motion depends mainly on the shape of the nose cone, the diameter of the rocket, and the speed of the rocket. The first point that meets the air is the nose cone at the front end of the rocket. If the speed of a rocket is less than the speed of sound 1200 kilometers per hour in air at sea level, the best shape of a nose cone is a rounded curve. At supersonic speeds, faster than the speed of sound, the best shape is a narrower and sharper point. In reality, flight tests aim to bring the Starship to an orbital speed of about 28,000 kilometers per hour. However, the speed of a rocket through the air increases drag. As speed doubles, drag increases four times as much. Therefore, designing V2's nose cone sharper requires the rocket's diameter to be smaller. It's very important. Rockets with a larger diameter have more drag because there is more air being pushed out of the way. Drag depends on the cross-sectional area of the object pushing through the air. Making a rocket as narrow as possible is the best way to reduce drag. The heat shields on the nose cone are different from those on V1, and honestly, it's unclear why. The tiles gather on the pointed top only instead of spreading to the lower, as you can see. Nevertheless, what I'm pretty sure of is these star bricks will be held by adhesive rather than pins. This shift has been kicked off on Ship 29 by taking off the old tile, cleaning the area, and roughing the area up to allow the adhesives to stick to the metal better, allowing the tiles to stay on the vehicle. It can be said that SpaceX is doing the best thing it can to ensure the heat tiles will not fall off again in Flight 4. If that works, the new update will be applied to Starship's next generation. Last but not least, the forward flaps mounted side of the nose cone also get larger to suit the overall size of the rocket. This provides adequate control authority and maneuverability during flight. Larger rockets experience different aerodynamic forces compared to smaller ones, particularly during ascent and descent. The size and shape of the flaps must be optimized to effectively manage these forces and maintain stability throughout the flight envelope. More importantly, these flaps must be structurally more robust to withstand the aerodynamic loads and mechanical stresses experienced during flight. The size of the rocket 
and the forces involved may influence the design and materials used for the flaps to ensure adequate strength and durability. Before coming up with the nose cone's new design on V2, SpaceX had been working on various versions of Starship's nose cone for several years. Since mid-2020, they assembled pathfinders and prototypes of varying fidelity around the same time when Starship SN15 became the first and only prototype to successfully launch and land to date, excluding Starship MK1, which never had its far flimsier nose fully installed. The Starship nose design has been extremely consistent ever since SpaceX began building the first prototypes in mid-2020. SpaceX temporarily placed the nose cone on top of the Starship MK1 body as a focal point for CEO Elon Musk's 2019 update event. The MK1 nose cone was removed immediately after the event, while the more critical part of the rocket, the body, was taken to a nearby launch pad for testing. Early prototypes were inevitably scrapped as SpaceX quickly iterated on the nose design and assembly process, culminating in Starship SN8, which became the first prototype to have its basic structure, tank section, nose, and flaps fully assembled. After SN8, SpaceX went one step further in improving the nose cone with Ship 20. This time, one new feature was added, heat shield. It is considered the first Starship designed specifically for orbital launches, and is also the first design to be placed on a booster rocket. So, TPS was installed as an obvious condition for its reusability. Compared to the previous variants, the Ship 20 nose cone or current nose cone has had a change in the manufacturing process. The first nose cones were all made up of five steel rings welded together that gradually tapered towards the top. These rings are also made up of a series of thin, stamped steel. Therefore, it will have a lot of welds causing a rough appearance with prominent welds at the surface. But with the current versions, the number of steel rings has been reduced from five to two. Steel plates are also increased in size, thereby reducing the number of welds. Moreover, the old welding method is also replaced by a new fiber laser welding method, making the welds more precise, sturdy, and shiny. This upgrade will also make the nose cone more durable to withstand the effects of harsh environments during missions. The introduction of Ship 26, specifically to carry fuel for the Starship's in-space refueling process, marks another update of the nose cone. Because Ship 26 is not planned to come back home after launch, SpaceX decided to ditch some unnecessary parts containing heat shield and a pair of flaps. Thus, the vehicle can be cut down on excess weight. Instead, that weight will be used to increase the fuel payload it can carry to serve its main mission, refueling for other starships. However, the disappearance of both the heat shield and flap does not affect the regular structure and function of the nose cone. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time